Hey everyone, it's Dustin with TechMD. I am on my way to go do a repair for a ZTE Max XL, I do believe. Anyways, um, it is going to be quite of a challenge phone because unfortunately we don't have LCD or frame with it. It's just the LCD and glass. Anyways, uh, thanks for watching our videos and we're going to cut right to it. See ya. Okay, so this is the ZTE XL just released. I'm at a customer's home, so I apologize for any additional noise. Um, hopefully not too much because I have a noise canceling headset. Anyways, so we're going to have to work on this new phone and figure out how it opens. Um, it looks like maybe this back panel will open like this, but it could also open through the front. Um, so we're going to check out the cables and see if it's one of these phones that open through the front. So this cable looks like it would plug in on the center here. And this cable. Here. Looks like it would plug in. Mm, I don't know if it'd go around. So I don't think it'd really fit on the side either. <laughs> so I'm not sure. We might have to take off the front here first and go from there and then see if it's one of those devices. So I would recommend if you're trying to salvage a LCD for any reason, which probably is not a good idea on this particular phone, um, to use a heat gun, but today we're not gonna use a heat gun for speed here. So I'm looking for my iSesame or my iFlex tool here in my toolbox so I can actually dig into the screen. Uh, there it is. pretty glued in there. It's really glued in there. So yeah, this phone once again, ZTE XL or ZTE Max XL, I should say. Um, how much was the part again for you? 55. 55, yeah. And you should uh, uh, pay for this type of repair if you don't want to do it yourself. Should be no more than $50. Um, if you are looking to do it yourself, then just follow these instructions really carefully and hopefully you're successful. Um, this tool is about like $10 and this tool um, also this can come with an eye sesame tool which I can link the parts down below for you guys so we're just digging this out like I said you can put a heat gun to it to make it a little easier some of the adhesive is pulling out which is fine and we're just doing some prying and twisting action here Looks like I sliced this cable, which belongs, okay, so this does go under the display. And so the only way this actually comes off is through the back. So the reason why I did it through the front is because I wasn't 100% sure if it was going to clip in the other way, but we now know that the phone opens through a different direction. You know, play and we're gonna see if we can open it. It might be one of these phones. Or you open it this way. Doesn't seem, oh wait, here we go. I am getting some progress there. I need a plastic tool. Yeah. <laughs> the customer says it's kind of like chucking an oyster if you guys didn't hear that. So we do mobile repairs in uh, Salt Lake City, Utah, and uh, Utah County and Davis County. And I do all the advanced repairs, um, the mobile stuff. So, and this particular phone, like I said, it's still new and I haven't worked on it. So I have to kind of figure it out. And it's certainly not letting go of anything. I don't really see how this back panel comes off either. And that is really not one to come off either. So let's try to take off the back panel. Oh, okay, there we go. Back panel's coming off. 
I just didn't want to ruin that back cover if it wasn't one of those ones that doesn't come off. So it's all clipped in. So I'm just going around, barely putting my tool in because I don't know if there's anything I'm going to cut on the side here. There's a fingerprint sensor reader there, so I'm sure there's a, some kind of cable that's going to be attaching there in the center. So let's just work our way around here. And all those clipping noises is a good indication that we're actually getting inside the phone here. So um, to start, you don't have to pull off that display like we did initially, but eventually you do have to pull off that display to glue one in. So you can take that off first or you can take it off after you open up the phone. Either way you wanna go. Okay, so there's that cable I was talking about. And it looks like it's actually under this piece here. It looks like we got some Phillips. So let's uh, start off with the fingerprint sensor reader. At least this finger sensor print reader is a lot better than the Galaxy S8 Plus and S8, which I haven't made a video yet for those guys yet, but I will, I promise. I'm just busy. All right. Let's get our tweezers at this and try to lift this. Oh, you know what? There's a little lock and security right here. There's an extra little screw that's hidden. <clears throat> Very common to manufacturers to hide screws. That's why I'm doing this and you're not, initially. <laughs> that's why you're watching this video, is to find out all the hide and seek stuff. Okay, so that's why this little mid frame didn't come off, is because these screws are all here. Okay, now that we've actually removed all the screws here, um, I think, I'm sure what that is. It looks like, oh, it's just the back cover for the Touch ID. Okay, we gotta pop out that SIM card there. So, use a SIM card popper. Okay, so we're gonna have to pop the SIM card out on the side here. And push that open. You need definitely a really long SIM card popper. Uh, tweezers will not work. Boy, you have to sure terrorize this phone just to open it. So now we have to get to this mid frame. And so we're just sliding our tool all around, our plastic tool. The tar pick or the other pick. That's fine. And we're just putting some pressure under there and pulling this up. Good, now we're finally inside the phone, oh my gosh. What an overly complicated phone for a cheap phone. Okay, so we need to have this cable plugging in right here, and this cable plugging in right there. So it looks like we also have to remove the battery and motherboard just to do this. Wow, wow, this is bonkers. So be really careful with that. I also have this new tool that I left out in my car. It's supposed to help me pop batteries and it's plastic. Yep, I totally left it out in my car. That's okay. Just slowly cut the adhesive, just not cut the battery. I hope it's not glued all the way. Looks like there's a cable down here too, so I gotta be careful. Okay, that's the cable I was talking about being careful with. Whew. 
My goodness. Okay, this might not be a do-it-yourself uh, repair at home. Uh, to be honest, guys, this is um, pretty challenging already. And that's for me. Okay, so now we have to remove the motherboard here. And I don't see any screws. Just lots of little clips. Other boards kind of clipped in up there. Okay, we'll actually set that aside and we're gonna pull this up. There we go. Now we can pull put the display in. Let's actually move that out of the way. So after you terrorize the whole phone, then you take off the display, which we just got done doing the first step. It would be preferable to get something with the full frame, but it was not available. So when you're searching for a part, you want to search for ZTE Max XL LCD and frame. This one obviously does not have that. It's going to make it a lot easier on you when gluing it in. So right now I'm just cutting off the old adhesive. And we're already 15 minutes in. This is a longer phone than I definitely expected. Most cheap phones only take like five minutes, but this particular phone is much longer. Okay, now we scraped off all the glue. We're gonna have to tape this down. Um, Unfortunately, adhesive was not available as well. There's some indents of where that you don't want to put the adhesive. So this phone is just extra difficult for no particular reason. I'm using double-sided red tape. Um, I'd recommend finding adhesive for the display if you're going to do this. That way you don't have to play arts and crafts here. You would usually have to type in the name of the device and then LCD and then adhesive. You should be able to find it. Hopefully one day it'll be available. This phone's too new to be available right now. And so I just pulled up the, the red adhesive tape. Okay, now the sides, they're way too thin to put some adhesive down. So I'm also going to have to do a little something different here. So I am there's no LCD or frame available in the future, I will conclude that this phone is not worth fixing. It is too time consuming with this adhesive and putting on a screen. Normally these kind of repairs, I charge about $80 in labor just due to this time that we have to spend on doing this. And I'm really fast at doing repairs, so most of you are going to spend several hours doing what I'm doing right now. So I'm going to tape down the sides here, get right to the bleeding edge, and I'm going to cut it down to make this work.
Okay, almost done with the adhesive part and then we can put it all together finally. So I'm just taking a bladed edge here and then cutting it right there. It doesn't get all the way to the side, but it's the best we can do with the material that we got. I suggest some thinner stuff if you got it, but to be honest, it's extremely hard to put that on even with the thin stuff. Okay, so let's put on a new display, cross our fingers and hopefully that it works because once we seal this, um, it's not going to come off very easily. Okay, we have to cut the eyepiece out here. There's some leftover adhesive. And we have to cut the proximity sensor hole. Once again, leftover adhesive. So, I'm going to put this through first, and then this through second. I'm just going to slide it in, starting with the top first. Make sure it's flush and even. Can't really see, so I'm going to move that out of the way. And we're going to pull this through as much as possible. Okay. And then we're going to seal it all up and make sure it's sitting flush. And it is. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. Now to protect the display, we're going to set it down on this piece of plastic here. Okay. Now for reassembly. Make sure that's plugged in in that hole there. Okay, it is. We'll lift this cable down, move that cable over, move that cable up and plug in the motherboard. Now the motherboard clips in up here, with the downward motion. Hmm. I think, <laughs> not really feeling like it's clipping anywhere. Best thing to do is line it up with the holes. There we go. Okay, all the cables are up and above from underneath, and then we're gonna plug them all in like little Legos. So plug that in. This cable is way off, so we actually need to move it over, shift it over, and make sure it's lined up with that hole right there. So we're just lining this cable up. That way it actually clips on properly. Okay, the cable's clipped on. And we can uh, make this flush if we can here, without breaking anything. Trying to make this cable set flat as possible. Okay, now we plug this in. And then plug that in, which looks like, I don't know, power, volume, or both. And we plug the front camera in. And the antenna in. Kind of have to feel this one in. This one's always challenging. Get really close and look at it as close as possible and then push in. Also, what can help is some tweezers to push in. Okay, looks like we got everything all sitting in there flush. There's no screws there. I'm gonna go ahead and put the battery in. And at this point, you could actually finally check your display, which is pretty much ridiculous. I think there might be a different way of checking it, but I don't have time to mess with that right now. Okay, so charge port's down there, so we're gonna actually slide it in a sliding action like this, and then push down and clip around. If you worked on the Galaxy 6, you would understand that motion real easy. 
Okay, so it's all clipped in and now we can actually get the SIM card reader and plug that in next. The adhesive does not want to let go of the SIM card. <laughs> and SIM card, plug it in. Slide it in, good. I got it the right direction the first time. And let's put all the screws in except for the last two, which is your fingerprint sensor reader. It's probably the power button anyway, so <laughs> maybe maybe we can't turn it on. What is that the power button or is the fingerprint sensor the power button? Power button. That's the power button. That's the power button? That's the fingerprint sensor. Okay. Get some of these screws in. Okay, now we got that in. I'm gonna go ahead and try to kick it on while it's fingerprint sensor reading. Looks like we got something that was blinking there. That's normal, just like some pulse eight. Oh, we'll see if it turns on for us. It might be dead st still. I think we're too dead. Yeah, it only had two or one or two percent charge. Okay, so now we're gonna put this uh, final piece in here and seal up the phone. Okay, we're gonna go put this on charger. Okay, it looks like the phone is up and running. I just gave it a little bit of a charge. Yeah, press and hold, it's weird. Kid showing me how to work his phone. All right, yeah, it looks like it's fully functioning. Uh, that button works. Uh, does these buttons, do they have buttons? Oh, okay, cool. And those so are back. that's the back button. So this is the back, back button? It should take us home. Okay, yeah. and that's the, okay, I see. Cool. All right, yeah, it's everything. And um, customer wants to say something, so one second. Thanks, Tekken D, for fixing my phone.